Welcome to Counselor Soapbox video, Learning About Alcohol, Part 22, Individual Counseling for Alcoholism. Individual counseling for substance use disorders is much less common than in mental health or medical settings. There are lots of possible styles and theories, but the best predictor of success is the relationship between the counselor and the client. Counseling for addictions is much more solution focused than typical mental health counseling. It's focused on changing behavior rather than finding out why the behavior occurred. Elements of individual counseling include feedback to the client, reality testing, since many people who are using their reality becomes distorted. The counselor points out discrepancies, discrepancies between what they say and what they do, or the things they express and the feelings they have. There's also elements of drug education and education about recovery. Individual counseling for substance use disorders is focused on recovery and what to expect. Twelve separate job skills are needed to be a good substance abuse counselor and they're covered in another series of the Counselor Soapbox videos. In individual counseling, the counselor needs to be a good listener. This is sometimes called Rogerian counseling. You look for areas of the client's life that are affected by substance use, and the counselor in training needs to develop a thing called appropriate self-disclosure. The therapeutic relationship is extremely important. The counselor is a guide to recovery land. The counselor should exhibit unconditional positive regard. Regardless of what the client has done, the counselor has to believe they are capable of changing in order to be effective. While the counselor is the guide, the client has to take the trip or do the work of recovery. By the time a client reaches drug and alcohol treatment, many parts of the client's life have been affected by drugs and alcohol. The client may have legal issues, financial issues, problems in relationships, parenting challenges. They may have educational deficits or need more education. There are often employment problems. Economic situations are important in recovery. There may be outstanding bills that need to be paid, and the client may have damaged or poor credit. Physical health has often been impaired. Friendships may have been damaged, and clients may need to reestablish religious or spiritual connections. There are some missteps which counselors need to avoid. One is focusing on or spending time trying to determine if the client is lying. Often, the client's sense of reality has been so changed that they are deceiving themselves. They may say things that are untrue, but they really believe them. We also need to be careful not to uh, be negative and say that the clients are manipulators or trying to manipulate. Manipulation is one way of getting your me needs met. Counselors need to teach their clients new ways of getting their needs met by being honest and forthright. Remember that the primary relationship for most people in substance abuse recovery is their drug of choice, whether it is ethyl, ethyl alcohol, or crystal methamphetamine, or some other drug, Mary Jane marijuana. So when the client gives up that relationship, there's a sense of grief and loss, just like a family member dying. And those relationships uh, with the drug of choice have also created difficulty in many of that client's other relationships. Counselors in training are often taught about a thing called evidence-based practices. There is a national registry of evidence-based principles and practices. But remember, not all evidence-based practices are equal. Some have lots of testing and good research, and others have as little as one test or one experiment that said that 
uh, method of counseling might be effective. Most programs have a manual and they do manualized approaches. The idea here is that there shouldn't be large differences in the quality of counseling a client receives based on which counselor they are assigned to. Everyone follows the manual, though the personality of the counselor is important. In doing a manualized approach or following a particular curriculum, it's important that the counselor stay uh, faithful to the system that's being used. This is called fidelity to the model. Counselors should have training ongoing. They should have supervision. That's where you go to the supervisor, clinical supervisor, about your issues, the things you need to learn in developing your skill as a counselor. There's also a thing called consultation. That is where you go and ask about particular issues your client has and learn how to work with those. It's important not to fuzzy up or confuse supervision, which is about you, and consultation, which is about the client. What's ahead on the Counselor Soapbox video channel? More videos on drug counseling, drug education, mental health, and wellness. If you've enjoyed this video, please click the like button below. Comments are always appreciated. And if you want to see new videos in this series, please subscribe. Thanks for watching. For more information, please visit my blog, counselorsoapbox.com. David Joe Miller fiction and nonfiction books are available on Amazon.